My name is Dom, and I'm a Swedish flint mapper. And what you can see here is my raw material. And this raw material I brought from the south of Denmark, from Lorland Falster. And um, it's uh, even a, a, stack, a stack of antlers over there, moose antlers, and some deer antlers, which I cut up and make good working tools out of. This flint is one of the most, one of the best quality flint in the world, I think. This Danish flint doesn't need heat treating. You can nap this flint without heat treating it and uh, you can do it even quite easily. Some bigger knots here are good for making flint axes square square-sided axis. You even have nice material here for blade core making with already done nice platforms. And the shape is good for tall and very long ones. And even here I have thinner pieces. Very good material for, for example, Danish flint daggers. Lanceolate daggers and even fish tail ones. It's no problem with this flint. Uh, this is a, a, a Danish uh, lanceolate flint dagger. This one is uh, not finished, it's a pre work. This one is just napped with a billet flaking and it has been pressure flaked a little bit. I have tried to grind it a little bit at the other side. But I should pressure flake it a little more narrow this way and grind it 100% and then pressure flake it with a copper stick. This, is a, a, this one is about uh, 30 centimeters tall. I have smaller ones, spare points, and, and with different kinds of flint. This one is uh, um, a, a, a point, a solitium point, made of flint from Czechoslovakia. This flint has been used at Maren in Czechoslovakia and it's very good quality and it's made out of a flake, just a flake. Most of those pressure flake stuff you can see here is made out of flakes. This is a piece of obsidian that does, it also is grinded. So it should be pressure flaked. Perfect parallel pressure flaking all over the surface. And that's this one or also going to be that when it's finished. And I had to say it, it needs no heat treating. The flint's quality is absolutely fabulous. Hello. Well, now we have come to the department of axes. And those axes you can see here are Neolithic axes, both napped and also polished axes. Those are axe blanks I have made. Those are not finished yet. They have to be more napped, so you get more nice sems, also polished. But you can, you, you have uh, 10 pieces and you make 10 blanks. And then you can map them more nicely. And when you're finished with that, you can go for finished surface, polished with a nice edge here, and put in a shaft. You can take down a tree of this thickness for half an hour, if you're good at using flint axes, if you know how to use them, if you know how to chop wood with them. Don, yes? how long time do you make an axe like that? Uh, how long time does it take to nap one and to polish one? This one, this axe is uh, about 35 centimeters long. It took me from a blank to this stage about 45 minutes, one hour. Make it. 
but you need to know how to do it and you need exercising. And the polishing? The polishing, to polish this axe, this tall one, will take me about in between five and ten hours efficient time to grind it. And I do it per hand. I'm not using any grinding tools at all. I just have a sandstone filled up with quartz and different kinds of chisel materials. It's a perfect combination. Together with water, you can do it by hand. The thin side, the broad side, the edge needs very, very nice grinding surface to get sharp. It's difficult to grind the edge on a heavy grind material. You need a very, very, very fine sandstone or quartzite to get a sharp edge here. If it's too heavy material, you will put flakes, small, small, small pieces are coming out of the edge when you do grinding. You need a very, very smooth and nice grinding material to get a nice edge. Just grinding up the platform here to make it strong. You can't have a platform with sharp edge here because the sharp edge will break. You have to grind it with a with a hammer stone like this. Get the platform rough and heavy. And like this. And bend up the, the, the chisel a little bit. The antlerchisel and use a heavy wood billet. Let it work by itself, just move it. Don't use force. Not very successful, but a small one that came out here. Nice shapes, two ridges, sharp edges, nice for a small arrowhead. 